of Illyria was ruled by a noble duke called Orsino. Duke Orsino, a powerful noble man, is a trustworthy and kind gentleman, but he is forever melancholy. The reason for his melancholy is because of his unquieted love for the beautiful Duchess Olivia. He is always thinking about Olivia and frequently sends his messengers letters and gifts trying his best to win over the love of Olivia. Bo, there you are Valentine. What news do you have? I hope it's good. Uh, what did Olivia say? Oh, Olivia refuses to see anyone as she was in morning. She has said that she will not see any strangers for less seven years. And she was warning. She is warning the death of her beloved brother. She planned to lock herself up in the room and live like the man and stay away from society. Oh. Well, at least now I know that Olivia has such a pure and loving heart. She must love her brother so much to mourn for him so intensely. She's capable of great love and affection. So when she comes out for mourning, she'll definitely fall in love with me. I'm really glad that I found such a wonderful soul. Come, Valentine, let's go into the garden. In another part of Illyria, a ship captain and a young woman named Viola get washed into the land after surviving a shipwreck. This is this captain. This is Illyria, lady. What will I do in Illyria without my brother Sebastian? Oh, don't worry, dear lady. When the ship split into two, I saw your brother coming away towards the shore. He definitely would have reached. On another part of this country. Please don't grieve. Captain, here, take this gold. Do you know this country? Of course, I was born and brought up here. This place? Nilia is ruled by a gentle and noble duke called Orsino, who is in love with a rich lady called Olivia. Maybe I can go and find some. Work at Olivia's house. I don't think that would be possible because Olivia doesn't speak to strangers. Why don't you work for you, Corsino? Sir, thank you. Farewell. Farewell, dear lady, and good luck. Guys, my sins, as a young lad, I will find work in the household of Duke Orsino at Olivia's house. It's Ariel. Maria, I really don't understand why my niece Olivia is taking her brother's death so seriously. What, Madam Olivia, that is none of your business. But please, Sir Toby, do not enter the house very late in the night. It disturbs my lady very much. But what did I do wrong? And Madam hates your terrible drinking habits. He's very annoyed by your behavior. By the way, did you bring any foolish friend of yours into the house and introduce him to Madam? Yes, I brought my friend Sir Andrew H to court my niece. What? Sir Andrew is a fool and definitely not not an eligible suitor for my lady. He has a horrible, disreputable habit. Make sure he stays away from my lady. Go away, Sir Andrew is a perfect match for Olivia. He is a rich man and well accomplished in music and languages. Sir Andrew is a fool and a drunkard like you. Shh, here comes Sir Andrew. <laughs> Greetings, Sir Tom. How are you, Sir Tom? I am well, Sir Andrew. Bless you, friends. To you too, sir. Who is this, sir, Tommy? That's my niece's chambermaid, Maria. Greetings, Miss Mary. My name is Maria. Goodbye, gentlemen. What happened, sir Andrew? Why do you look so sad and depressed? Oh, 
boy does not think so, Toby. If I'm going home tomorrow, your niece doesn't think that I am worthy enough to court her. So, I don't see a reason in staying here any longer. That's not true! Don't you worry! I don't think she likes me. She will only marry the Duke. Come on! I know Olivia. She will never ever marry anyone above her degree, both in riches and in status. So don't you worry. You have a very good chance of her choosing you. Stay for here another month and enjoy the luxuries of this palace. Okay, sir Toby, if you say so. Desario, Duke seems to the Duke seems to like you very much. You have gained its favor in be, in a very short time. It has been only three days since he has known you, and he already treats you as his close friend. Surprised about this myself. Look, here comes the Duke. The Sario? Cesario! What is Cesario? Oh my lord, at your service. Oh dear Cesario, you know everything about me. So you also know how much I love Olivia. So what you want me to do is go to her house, wait outside the house and not leave to leave an audience with her. My lord, if he's so sad and depressed as everyone says, then how will she agree to see me? Uh, I don't know what you will do. Uh, talk loudly or act crazy. Do whatever you want to do, but just make sure that you meet her. My lord, I would like to if she agrees to see me. What will I tell her? Tell her how much I'm in love with her. Tell her how faithful I am to her. She definitely looks at the walls of a young boy like yourself. I don't think so, my lord. Come on, don't lose hope. I know you can definitely do it. And if you succeed, you will be well rewarded. So get going. The time is best to make sure Olivia falls in love with the Duke. This is indeed a very tough task because of my affections for the Duke. Where have you been? It's been so long since my since our mistress Olivia has seen you. She's going to kill you when she sets eyes on you. Let her execute me. Once I'm executed, I don't have to be afraid of anything. Uh, here comes my lady. You can explain yourself or come up with a good excuse. Otherwise, be prepared for the consequences. I have to think of a really good excuse and I have to think something funny too. A witty fool is better than a foolish wit. What is he doing here? Get him out of my sight. He's a boring fool. Feste, did you hear my lady? Go away and don't come anywhere near the house. Madam, please, you can't judge a book by its cover. I can be a good fool. Really? Can you prove it to me? Surely, madam. Go ahead. Prove it if you can. Madam, I have a few questions for you. Please answer my questions like a good student. I am forced to listen to your nonsense because I have nothing else to do. My dear lady, can you please tell me why you are mourning? I am mourning because I lost my brother. Oh, I think his soul might be in hell. What? No way. His soul is definitely in heaven. If his soul is in heaven, then why are you mourning? Take away this fool. What do you think of this fool, Malvolio? Isn't he getting funnier by the day? I am really surprised that you enjoy the company of this troublemaker. You shouldn't encourage a person like him, my lady. 
he's not that smart as he claims himself to be. Malvolio, your vanity is not allowing you to appreciate what you see around you. If you are good-natured and generous, you would not take the words of a fool so seriously. My dear lady, there's a young gentleman at the gate who really wants to see you. Has he come from the court of Duke Ursino? I don't know, madam, but there are a lot of people around him. Whom is he talking to? The young man is talking to Sir Toby now. Send my uncle away. He only talks nonsense. Malvolio, please go and talk to this visitor. If he has been sent by the Duke, tell them that I am sick and send them away. Okay, madam. Have you sent away my uncle? I can still hear his voice. Is he drunk already? How can a person be brain dead so early in the day? Ma'am, the young man really wants to see you. I have tried to tell him that you are sick and sleeping. Tell him that I am not interested in speaking with him. I did tell him but he says he will wait till you are ready to see him. He seems to have an answer to all of the questions. What kind of a man is he? Um, he is not old enough to be a man, nor is he young to be a boy. He is very rude and he keeps insisting on speaking with you. How rude, madam. I don't think you should encourage this. Hmm. Okay, call him in. Let's see what he has to say. I represent the lady of the house. You can tell me. I have a long speech and I would like to address it only to Lady Olivia. Where are you coming from, sir? I'm sorry, my lady. I have memorized my speech and the answer to this question is not part of my speech. Am I addressing the lady of the house now? Yes, you are. Caesarea professes the Duke Orsino's love for Olivia, talking about how beautiful Olivia is and how much the Duke is in love with her. Caesarea conveys all that Orsino wanted him to convey to Olivia. Olivia listens to what Caesarea has to say, not because she is interested in Orsino, but because of her attraction towards Caesarea. Olivia finds Caesarea very charming and handsome and takes a sudden like and fancy towards him. Olivia demands to be left alone when Caesarea talks. She even takes off her veil while talking to him. Finally, she asks Caesarea to leave, telling him not to come anymore as a messenger to the Duke, but he could come and see her at his own will. After Caesarea takes leave, Olivia calls for Malvolio. Malvolio, please run and return the string to the young lad. And tell him that I will not accept any gifts from Duke Orsino. Okay, madam. That young lad is quite handsome and sharp. I think I have taken a fancy to him. Something seems to have happened to me. I am not going to worry too much about all of this. I am just going to leave it to fate. Meanwhile, in another part of Illyria, Sebastian has been saved from a shipwreck by a gentleman called Antoni. Sebastian is under the impression that his sister has drowned in the shipwreck. He decides to wander into Illyria to find a purpose to his life. Are you sure you want to go to the town alone? I can come if you want me to. It's fine, Antonio. I'll go on my own. My luck is pretty bad again. And I don't want you to be a part of that. Bad luck? What bad luck? Where are you going? I'm just wandering in no particular direction. Just before you rescued me from that shipwreck, I lost my twin sister. Oh, what happened? My twin sister Viola was traveling with me on that trip. And her before you rescued me, 
I saw her drown. It is indeed the worst thing that has ever happened to me. That's true. That's very tragic. Everyone used to say that she looked exactly like me. But I have always felt that Viola was a very beautiful person with a kind and beautiful heart too. I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm so sorry that it caused us so much trouble. Let me come with you. That way I can be some help to you. I don't want to burden you. I'm going to go to Duke or Sino to look for a job myself. I wish I could be some help to you, my friend. But I have plenty of enemies at Cosino's court. But you are a friend worthy of taking a test, so I will follow you. Meanwhile, outside Olivia's house, an angry and confused Malvolio rushes to meet Cesario with the ring. Excuse me, young man. Weren't you the person who was with Countess Olivia some time back? Yes, I was. I just left the house. Here, take back this ring. You could have saved me the trouble and taken it back yourself. Lady Olivia will not accept any gifts from the Duke and she wants you to make it very clear to him that she has nothing to do with the Duke. I hope that's clear and please convey this message to the Duke. Take the ring from me. I will not give it back. You threw the ring at her, so you have to take it back. You can pick that up if you need it. I did not give her any ring. What's the meaning of this? I don't understand. I hope she's not interested in me. That would be a disaster. Maybe this disguise is not a good plan after all. My lord, Loves her so much. I love him just as much, and Olivia is so deluded into taking a liking towards me. I cannot solve this. Only time can sort out this mess. Totally unaware of all this confusion, Sir Robin Welch and Mary Wilkins make no sense. So that is many ways with the heart of Olivia. But is unable to get to know her. Who we best? She keeps encouraging you to stay longer and try. Just enjoy some of their music. In all the kids talk, in love talk, and generally having a great time. <laughs> Oh, what a racket all of you are creating! Olivia has instructed Malvolio to kick all of you out of the house. Olivia can go to China. For all I can, and my value cannot do anything to me. I am a relative to Olivia, and hence a very important person. Sir Toby is very good at acting like a fool. Yes, indeed, he is very good. So am I. He has just practiced a lot, and it comes naturally to me. For God's sake, can you all stop this? What's wrong with all of you? Is this the way you behave at Countess Olivia's house? Why are you making so much of noise at night, singing so loudly and creating such havoc? Have you any manners, or don't you have any respect for anything or anyone? We respect the beat of the song. What we do is none of your business, so you can leave. Sir Toby, I have to be very frank with you. Lady Olivia is allowing you to stay in this house because you are her uncle, but she does not approve of your behavior. If you are willing to stay, then you have to change. Otherwise, Lady Olivia is ready to bid you goodbye. My Valio, you are no more than a servant in this house. You cannot tell me what I should do. Just because you want to be in the good books of Olivia. We don't want any of us to enjoy ourselves. Maria, bring us some wine. Maria, if you really care for our mistress, then you will not encourage this type of behavior. Be careful. Lady Olivia will come to know of this. Do whatever you want. I'm not scared of you. 
This malvolio needs to be taught a lesson. We need to plan and make a fool out of it. Yes, you are right. We should do something and teach him a lesson. Sir Toby, please don't do anything rash tonight. Lady Olivia is not in the best of spirits today. Ever since the Duke's messenger visited, she has been upset. As for Malvolio, I'll take care of him. What are you planning to do? I'll drop some love letters for him, as if my handwriting looks just like Olivia's. Malvolio will definitely fall for this. He will think that the letters are from Olivia and believe that they should love with him. Sounds like a great plan. Maria, Sir Toby, and Andrew, along with the best thing, carry out the plan to take a fool out of the man for you. Meanwhile, at the casino now, casino is not at the best of the place. Because the even after the defeated attack, Olivia is still not going to do it. Come here, dear Casario. If you have a fair love and if you go through the pain that I'm going through right now, think of me. I'm not in a mood for anything. Everything around me feels so gloomy and sad. That's the way any lover feels when their love is not accepted. Leo Casario, please try your love one more time and take my message to Olivia again. But what if she doesn't accept your proposal again? But I refuse to accept that. Eventually, she will accept it. How can you be so sure? By constantly thinking about Olivia, you fail to notice the people around you who love and care for you so much. Oh, uh, I'm not going to accept any of your arguments. Please go quickly and give Olivia the strength. You never going to understand my true feelings. Let me carry out my duties. While you are still this guy in the kitchen, there is a way to put him back in the mother and take the best food and cook it for him. So good. During the conversation, Viola is shocked to find out Olivia is still sitting. Do not have any feelings for the Duke, and she rises up for dinner too. Viola's worst nightmare becomes the death of the world, never to go back again. Meanwhile, Sebastian enters the diner, followed by Antonio, who is eager to help him. Sebastian, Sebastian, wait down. Antonio, did you follow me all along? Yes, my friend. I did not want you to go into an unknown city alone. Thank you, dear friend. Let's go into the city and look around. I'm afraid I cannot do that. You see, I have a lot of enemies in the court of Duke Ursula. So it's not advisable for me to roam around the streets of Andrea. Please take this money and go around the city. I will wait for you at any called Elephant. I will make arrangements for our stay and food while you take a look around the city. Oh, that sounds good. Thank you, my good dear friend. See you soon. Goodbye, Sebastian. I had asked the young man, Cathario, to come and dine with me, but he has not shown up yet. I wonder what happened. Mardia, where is my Bolio? I had sent for him and he had not shown up yet. What's taking him so long? I, he's coming, madam, but he's acting rather strange as if he has been possessed by the devil. Why? What is gotten into him? Is he talking nonsense? No, madam. Be, please be careful because he looks very disturbed. Hmm. Okay, call him in. Now let's have some fun. What's going on, Malvolio? Hello, my sweet lady. What's wrong with you? Are you keeping well? 
why are you standing there smiling like that and why are you wearing that hideous yellow colored cloth well ma'am you asked me to dress up in this yellow dress and always have a smile on my face what i asked you to wear this color i hate yellow please go away i will not tolerate any of this nonsense This is absolutely insane. Madam Duke or Sino's messenger has written and is waiting to see you. I will go and receive him. Maria, ask Sir Toby to take care of this poor fellow and make sure he gets some rest. Alas, I have been made a fool in front of my mistress. I have become a laughing stock in front of everyone in this house. The worst part is that I'm going to be taken care of by Sir Toby now. Everything was going on so well and I had a lot of respect around the house, but now all of that is gone. <laughs> you should have seen the look on his face. It was quite a sight. <laughs> Where is he? Where is my dad? Here he is. How are you, sir? Go away, all of you. Leave me alone. I need my prize. Go away, Sir, Sto- Sir Toby, and I have been instructed to take care of you. I don't need anyone to take care of me. Now, now, don't be angry. You will take care of him, Alvario. What are friends for? Yes, it will be a pleasure indeed. Go away, you lazy people! I I'm not shallow and cheap like you all. I have a bigger and better future waiting for me, and I don't have time to waste with people like you. What is that messenger boy doing again here, Sir Toby? I'm going to challenge him for a duel and get him out of the way. That's how I'm going. To, that's how I'm going to get him. Audience with Olivia. So Andrew, calm down. I understand your anger. Let me go and talk to him. Okay, Sir Toby. But if I see him here again, I will not stick to start a duel with him. Hello, sir. Hello to you, sir. Sir, you better think of a way to defend yourself. I don't know what you have done to upset him, but this night has challenged you for duel. Duel? But sir, I have not drawn. Tonight, what's the fight with you? You are wrong. Who did? Because clearly, you have done something too often this night. Please be on guard. This night is indeed very strong and powerful. This is indeed good and yet very strange. Please, sir, can you find out who this night is? I may have done something without my knowledge. That would have offended this person. I'll try to see what I can do. What do I do now? I think I don't know how to do it. If anything like that happens, then I'll be forced to reveal myself. Oh, there he is! I cannot wait another moment. There is nothing you or I can do about it. He insists on fighting with you. Sir Andrew draws his sword, and Viola is supposed to draw hers. Just then, Antonio enters the scene and mistakes Viola for Sebastian. That's not my friend. If this young man has offended you, I will take the blame for it. I will fight you. Who are you, sir? I am his friend, and will always be that. Defend him. Put away your swords. The police are here. Put away your sword. I will be back for you soon. This is the man. Do your job. Tell you, you are under arrest on the orders of Duke Corsino. You must be mistaken, sir. I have not done anything wrong. We are not the right person. I recognize your friendship, even without your assistance. Come on, sir. Let's go. 
this has happened because I came looking for you. There is nothing much that I can do. I have to face the consequences. Can I please have my purse back? Why do you look so confused? I really need the money. What money, sir? Are you really going to pretend that you don't know me? Let's go. Please, sir. I need to say something. I saved this young man's life when he was half dead and nursed him back to health. What a deceiver you have turned out to be, Sebastian. You look good from outside, but you're bad and rotten from within. This man is gone mad. Get him away. That man called me Sebastian. He has mistaken me for my brother. For what that means, my brother is alive. He's not dead after all, and he is in Illyria, dressed in similar clothes as me. Oh, that's such a wonderful news! I must go and find him. Are you trying to tell me that I was not sent to get you? I really don't know what you're talking about. Please leave me alone. Please stop pretending. I have been sent by Duchess Olivia. She has asked me to bring you to her house. I don't know any Olivia. I've got the wrong person. Please let me go. Well, so we meet again. Ah, you again? Come on, Andrew. Let us start from where we left off. I don't know what's going on. I really have done nothing. I don't understand the meaning of this. Oh, stop acting as if you don't know anything. Don't listen to him, Andrew. He's trying to get away. Oh no! I better go and report this to the lady. Now you're testing my patience. If it's a fight you want, I'm ready for it. No, Toby, stop this. Madam, are you really going to be like this? You ungrateful wretch! Get out of my sight. All of you, come to Sadio. I apologize on their behalf. Please come inside. What is the meaning of all this? I'm totally confused. I don't know what's going on. Am I awake or am I in a dream? Come with me, please. I'm still dazed and confused. Am I living in a dream? Where am I? And where's my friend Antonio? I've been looking for him all around. I can't find him, my dear friend. I really could use his advice right now. There seems to be a sudden stroke of good luck. I'm shocked to see the happenings around me. Is this lady insane? But she doesn't look so to me. If she was, she wouldn't be able to run a household with so many servants around. Something is strange, and it is not what it seems to be. Anyway, here she comes. Don't be angry with me for acting so quickly. I have made arrangements for our marriage. We will have a private wedding, and you can announce it once you are ready to make the announcement public. I have hope to be faithful to you, so I'll be faithful forever. If that's the case, lead the way. Priest is waiting to organize the wedding. When Sebastian and Olivia have solidified their match, the confusion is yet to be resolved at Duke Orsino's house. Viola feels sorry for the plight of Antonio and goes to plead his case with Orsino. How come the man who rescued me? I remember this face very well. He is the fierce captain who fought against our warship. Though he defeated us and caused us a lot of damage, His courage and bravery are indeed to be admired. Yes, sir. This is the same Antonio. This man was kind to me and took my side in the fight. He said strange things to me, which I didn't quite understand. You are a fearless pirate, but how did you manage to fall into the trap of these officers? Oh, Arsino. Please don't call me a pirate, even though we have been enemies. I came into the city to have that ungrateful lad standing next to you, who I rescued from a drowning in sea. I drew my sword to defend and rescue him when he was in trouble. But when police caught us, he pretended that he had not met me at all. 
I rescued him three months back, and ever since we have been together until day we enter the town today. Look at that! Well, here comes the Countess Olivia. For your information, the Sadio has been in my service for the past three months. Take him away, officers. The Sadio, you have missed our appointment. Appointment? I have no appointment with you, madam. Finally, Olivia, you have come. I've been waiting so long for you. I did not come for you, Ursino. I came here looking for Casario. What happened to you? What are you talking about? I feel so awful. I have been tricked. By who? Have you forgotten everything? Maybe I should call the priest to remind you. Come, Casario. There's no point in me staying here any longer. Come in, my lord. Stop, Casario, my husband. Husband? Yes. Can you deny it, Casario? What is she talking about? Are you her husband? No, my lord. I definitely am not. Olivia calls the priest who solemnized the wedding and proved that she and Casario had been married two hours back. You, Orsino, feels betrayed. Meanwhile, Sir Andrew and Sir Toby enter hut and complain to the Duke about being attacked by Caesario. Caesario denies the accusations. Everyone is confused and the confusion gets worse when Sebastian enters looking for Olivia. Olivia, my dear, I'm so sorry for hurting your relatives. They attack me and I do much more only to protect myself. I assure you, Olivia, I have nothing against them. I am really sorry. What? Same face, same voice, and the same way of dressing. But two different people? Is this some kind of optical illusion? Dear Antonio, my friend, I've been looking all over for you. Is it you, Sebastian? Yes, it does me. What is this miracle? I can't believe what I'm seeing. I don't remember having a brother, but I did have a sister who I presumed have been drowned. Poor Sebastian, it's me, Vyra. I disguised myself like you to safeguard myself in this new city. Viola, you have served me well these past few months. I'm sorry if I've caused you any distress. Please accept my hand in marriage. Eventually, all the confusions are sorted out and everyone finally finds their happiness. The twins unite, friends unite, and all differences of opinions get sorted out and the Duke and Duchess finally find their true match.